I love forms as much as the next person, but I've never really delved too deep into Squarespace forms. All I use them for, for the most part, is email newsletter sign-up forms and simple contact forms. But that said, there are so many options that Squarespace allows us to have with our forms. And as I've built more and more client sites out over the years, I've noticed that forms can be used in so many different ways. So I'm gonna go through every single part of Squarespace form and show you the potential that they hold. Let's dive in to Squarespace forms. So first of all, we're gonna add our Squarespace form. If we click on edit, I have actually already added this, so that's cheating. So I'll start again, add section. Then what we want to do is we'll go for a, a contact section and we'll just add this again. So first of all, what we want to do is double click and hit storage and just add an email in example at gmail.com. So that is where all of the form answers go. Now, then we want to go to content and give this a form name. So basically you can have multiple forms on your website. So I tend to name these the page that the contact came through. So you could have home contact form. You could have, let's say you have three different deals and you have a different contact form for each. You could have deal one contact form, deal two contact form, and that could tell you how successful the page is. And I find that a really useful tool. So I'm just going to call this example form, but you can customize this to be anything that you want. Button text. So that's this. And let's just say form stuff showcase then what we want to do is hit post submit so what you can do when a user has completed the form and sent it off is you can either just leave a quick message you can you can add html in so you can actually add code in or you can redirect them so you can redirect them to an external url or you can redirect them if you do a forward slash to one of your pages so i'm just going to redirect them to the home page then in design, we can have the button alignment or we could turn the form itself into a light box. So if we click this, it turns it into a box. And when the user clicks that box to open up the form, the, the form just pops up. I think this is a bit of a, a silly feature. I don't really ever use that. So we'll go back into design and we'll kill that off. So content, edit form fields. This is where it gets juicy. So you've got your basic name, email, subject, message. If we go into, let's just start off with edit and I'll show you how to edit what's currently there. You can drag these about and you can see that's instantly showcased here. If we move them about and if you want to get rid of something, just click that. Done when you're done. To edit inside of a field, you just click in and then you can change the name or you can change the label, sorry, which comes up here and then the description. So. All of them come with no description as standard, but you can put that in here. And then you can make it either required or not just by simply toggling this. So some things may be optional on your form, like where did you hear about us, for instance. You don't want that to be something that the user doesn't fill in and therefore doesn't send the form off to you. You don't want that to be the snag, basically. So you can toggle that off, but we'll keep that on required for now. Go back. And now what we want to do is add fields. So you can see we've got tons and tons of different options here. The name is just a simple first and last name. Text can be anything. So it's short. If we put text in, you can see it's just a short line here. But if we were to put longer text in, so that's the text area, you can see this is larger because this is probably what people use for right how we can help you, for instance. So like, let's see, how can we help? And then you can actually put a placeholder in here. So start writing, for instance. Then if we go back and back to the add fields, you've got email, which is simple. This will basically only accept emails. So you could, for instance, just have a text field and label that email. But sometimes there may be a mistake. Let's say someone accidentally misses the dot before dot com. That would still be submitted. Whereas with email, it will tell the user, oh, you've made a mistake. So that's always good to have. Then we've got phone. I would recommend not using this because it has a really funny format. I, I personally don't like this. So you can see that it, it comes up in a strange form. And I think that people look at this and go, I, I don't understand that whatsoever. So when I'm asking people for a phone number in a form, I just use a text and then just put a phone number. And then in the placeholder, I'll put, I will put 
plus 44 and then you can see that starts them off there and that that's for uk so that's if i'm on uk sites if i'm on us for instance i'll put something different but that is something that i would tweak with them um, with phone numbers so add field then this is a really handy one select this allows users to choose from different options so if we scroll down again you can give them lots of drop down options so if we add option three option four and then you can see if we save this open this up we have cool drop down like so and users can select one option basically and another version of this is the radio so at first with radio i was like well how can people listen to the radio via the form and then i looked into it and then i realized how stupid i was being so if you click radio this is like a multi-choice version of select where they don't have to click the drop down they can just see all of the options so if we hit save like this you can see that the user can toggle between options and you can add as many of them in as you want so let's get back onto this add a field and you've got survey which is basically another version of these and this allows you to get a feedback so again forms don't have to be just for contact or for newsletter signups they can be for feedback as well which i find really handy so if we go into survey and options the the one downside is that you only really get strongly agree disagree neutral etc but you can ask whatever questions you want and then users can click in here like they would in the radio then we've got checkbox so checkbox is essentially a radio but it allows the user to select multiple items so if we save that now open this up and then go back down here you can see with the checkbox we can select as many as we want which is really cool if let's say you've got a catering business and you're doing add-ons so let's say you're asking customers when they get in touch do you want starters mains desserts sandwiches drinks etc they can tick as many as they want and you can see who's contacting you exactly what they want and exactly when they want it which is good there's lots of different use cases for this so then we go back in if you want to break things up you can use a line so that's literally just a line like this but i find this handy if i've got different sections and i want to break it up because a line allows us to basically put a title as well so you can have second section i had a client recently that used this for job applicants so like section one was tell us about where you're from section two was about tell us what experience you have section three was what hours can you work and we used lots of different elements from the form builder and then i broke it up with lines which was really handy then we've got address again i'm not crazy on address it's okay but for me it seems geared more towards the us market with zip code and state slash province i tend to just use the larger text box so message like this and i just say address and then let the user put in their address manually then we've got website so this is super simple website does what it says on the tin it allows users to put in a website and if it's not the correct format that will be flagged up by squarespace then number i mean number just is what it is super simple it's just formatted with numbers I don't really see much need for that. Again, I would probably just use um, a small text block for this. Then date. Date is okay. Again, if you've got, say, an events business or something where the inquiries are going to be time sensitive, this is good to have. And it is pretty clear. Again, it's in US format. But there are codes on the internet that allow you to switch this to a UK format. Time. This is, I think this is unnecessary it's quite overkill with like the exact seconds so again i'd probably just use text block but it does exist then we've got currency so we go down you can put any currency symbol you want in there which is quite good so for instance on my website i have a contact form that asks potential clients their budget so i would have pound sign in here and then this allows them to put in their their budget and that allows me to see, okay, do I send this client my calendar link and get onto the phone with them? Or do I politely decline based on that budget? Then we've got hidden. So this is basically another way of showing where your traffic is coming from. So you would give this a variable and you can basically read here. It tells you which form is getting the most traffic and which is the most successful, basically. 
but I kind of just use uh, the actual title of the form here to get my information about this. Then finally, if we go back in here, we've got Twitter. So people can leave their Twitter ads in here. Again, I would just use a small text block and say, give us the link to your Twitter if it's that important. I feel that it's strange that they have Twitter, but not Instagram or YouTube or anything like that. So I would say the main things you're going to use in a contact form will be name, text, email, text area, and then you use one out of checkbox, radio, or select, potentially date, potentially currency. All the rest are much of a muchness and can be replaced with the simple text blocks. Hopefully this has helped you understand the potential of Squarespace forms, what they can do, and how they offer a lot more than just being a simple contact form. If you did find it helpful, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and check out all of the resources in the description below.